Hello and welcome back to you. This is Lakshmi Kantiwari. ARM has introduced a new processor of a Cortex M series and this time it is a Cortex M7. The ARM M7 processor is the most recent and the highest performance member of the energy efficient Cortex M processor family. ARM cores, the versatility and the memory features of the Cortex M7 enable more powerful, smarter and reliable microcontrollers that can be used across a multitude of the embedded applications. The primary focus of the Cortex M7 is improved performance. ARM's goal was to elevate the M series performance to a level previously unseen while maintaining the Cortex M series signature such as the small die size and the tiny power consumptions as well as the excellent responsiveness and ease of use of the ARM version 7 architecture. There are at least two regions ARM focused on a performance for the Cortex M7 processor. First, they want to further drive a wage between traditional 8 and the 16 bit microcontrollers and provide ARM a further differentiated market position. Second, the Cortex M7 will help support the Internet of Things and the wearable device markets. Focusing on enhanced DSP capabilities, the Cortex M7 is more suited to audio and visual sensor hub processing than any previous M series design. The Cortex M7 has twice the DSP power of the Cortex M4 by executing twice as many instructions simultaneously. And it also helps that the M7 can operate at higher clock frequency than the M4. It's backed by the KLCM's DSP library and include a single and double precision floating point unit. It was developed to provide a low cost platform that meets the needs of the MCU implementation with a reduced pin count and low power consumption while delivering outstanding computational performance and low interrupt latency. You can also use two M7 cores in lockstep running the same code, one following two cycles behind the others, so that the glitches can be detected by external electronics if the two CPUs suddenly behave slightly differently. The optional floating point unit provides a such a great feature such as the automated stacking of the floating point state is delayed until the ISR attempts to execute a floating point instruction. And this method reduces the latency to enter the ISR and removes the floating point context save for ISR that do not use the floating point. And it provides the instructions for a single precision data processing operations and optional instructions for a double precision data processing operations. Floating point unit also provides combined multiply and accumulate instructions for increased precision and easy hardware support for conversion, addition, subtraction, multiplication with the optional accumulate division and the square root. The nested vector interrupt controller, it is also known as NVIC, is closely integrated with the core to achieve low latency interrupt processing. The NVIC have 1 to 20 the NVIC have 1 to 240 configurable external interrupts. This is a configurable at implementation. It also has a configurable level of interrupt priority from 8 to 256. Configured at implementation. You can also do dynamic reprioritization of interrupts. NVIC features have support for tail chaining and late arrival of interrupts. This enables back-to-back -back interrupt processing without the overhead of state saving and the restoration between interrupts. The memory protection unit is used to manage the CPU access to memory to prevent one task to accidentally corrupt the memory or resources used by any other active tasks. This memory area is organized into up to 8 protected areas that can be divided 
up into eight sub areas. The protection area sizes are between 32 bytes and the whole 4 GB of the addressable memory. Tightly coupled memory is known as the TCM. This TCM is a technology which ARM's partner can use to extend the effective catching of a single M7 processor and has only been seen in the previous A and R series designs. In use, it can have the performance of a catch but unlike catch, its content are directly controlled by the developer. Developers can place critical code and data inside TCM that can be deterministically accessed with high performance in routines such as interrupt service routine. The M7 supports up to the 16 megabyte of the tightly coupled memory. The AHP lit peripheral AHBP interface provides access suitable for low latency system peripherals. It provides support for unaligned memory access while buffer for buffering of write data and exclusive access transfers for multiprocessor systems. The ATV interfaces output trace information used for debugging. The ATV interface is compatible with the core site architecture. The ARM Cortex M7 feature a six stage dual AC superscalar pipeline with a single and double precision floating point units which can execute two instructions at a time whereas a Cortex M7 can execute just one instruction at one time. This is where most of the speed up comes from. The Cortex M7 can run at a higher clock frequency than M4 and together these give on average two times uplift in DSP performance for M7 over M4. By doubling the performance, ARM calculates appliances and gadgets using the M7 can more quickly perform the complex mathematics which required to finally control motor movement in robots, analysis microphone, touch screens and other sensor data. The data processing unit provides parallelized integer register file with the six read ports and the four write ports for large scale deal issue. It provides users extensive forwarding logic to minimize interlocks. It has two ALU with one ALU capable of executing SIMD operation. Single MAC pipeline capable of 32 into 32 bit multiplication and the 64 bit addition with the two cycle result latency and one MAC per cycle throughput. The prefetch unit provides 64 bit instruction fetch bandwidth. The 4 into 64 bit prefetch queue to decouple instruction prefetch from a DPU pipeline operation. It also provides a branch target address cache BTEC for single cycle turn around for branch predictor state and a target address and a static branch predictor when no BTEC is specified. It also provides a powerful features to forwarding of flag for early resolution of a direct branches in the decoder and the first execution stage of the processor pipeline. The load store unit provides dual 32-bit load channels to TCM, data cache and AXI master interface for 64-bit load bandwidth and dual 32-bit load capabilities. The presence of instruction and data cases, branch predictions as well as tightly coupled memory are differentiating feature of the M7 versus previous M series processors. By providing high performance instruction and data cases, the M7 approaches more typical high performance processor design. Adding branch prediction allows ARM to target dedicated DSP devices with its Cortex M7 microcontroller. The DSP code is often filters data stream for applications such as audio input keyword detections, audio output equalization and frequency domain amplitude peak searching. When running on an average microcontroller, these tasks are almost always looped. Without a branch predictor, the code must continually evaluate 
a loop conditions that 99.9% of the time result in the same outcome. Branch predictors cost extra time space, but when DSP is your target, they are an obvious design benefit. According to ARM's benchmarking, the M7 achieves 5 core mark per megahertz or a 2000 core mark is scored at 400 megahertz in a 40 nanometer process at low power if you run the code in tightly coupled memory. The M4 can hit 3.4 core mark per megahertz according to previous ARM figures and runs at lower clock speed. The M7 can scale up to the 800 megahertz at 28 nanometer. The Atmel Freescale and the SD Microelectronics have already snapped up licenses to pump out the chips with the M7 core into the 60 nanometer to 40 nanometer process range, each core taking up to the 0.1 nanometer square of a silicon. So let's hope new ARM Cortex M7 based development boards will come very soon in the market. Thanks for watching and if you like it please thumbs up and stay tuned for the next tutorial.